Hello, it's Scott Manley here. So when I made that video about the energy required to destroy a planet, I made a fatal miscalculation. You see, uh, somehow that video got way more popular than I was expecting. I was very happy for that, but um, it ended up getting seen by an audience who were perhaps less familiar with physics than many of my viewers, and they were wondering what I was saying every time I used the word jewel. I wasn't talking about diamonds or rubies or female singer-songwriters, no. Uh, I was talking about the unit of energy. You see, when you're reeling out really big numbers, a lot of people have no idea how these kind of fit into reality. When I said 200 trillion trillion joules, I might as well have been using the term pirate ninjas. At least that would have some pop culture reference for people to fall back on. But there are units of energy that are used in everyday life, even though most people don't recognize them. Calories. Calories are on every food label telling you how much energy is in the food. A calorie actually comes from the amount of energy required to heat up water and one calorie is about 4.2 joules, although if you look at the fine print on food labels, what you'll see is they use kilocalories. So roughly speaking, one kilocalorie on a whatever food you're eating is 4.2 kilojoules. Anyway, this is great because it means I can invoke Ghostbusters and Egon's model of Twinkie energy visualization. The modern Twinkie is about 40 grams of sugar and fat, coming in at 135 calories, that's about 560 kilojoules. Now if I were to cross the memes and immediately go to Back to the Future, the energy in a lightning bolt is about 1.1 gigajoules, and that is the equivalent of a Twinkie that weighs about the same as me. That may seem big, but for Twinkie's 50th anniversary, they actually made a Twinkie that was over a ton, and if you figure out the energy content, that's about 20 gigajoules, or about the same energy as a large airliner at cruising speed. Okay, this might seem a little incongruent to non-physicists, but energy can come in many forms. You can have the chemical energy in the Twinkie, you can have the electrical energy in the lightning bolt, or you can have the kinetic energy of the airliner. All of these are kind of equivalent. Physics tells us how to convert one into the other. So let's try that energy scale again. The energy released in a one megaton nuclear weapon is about 4.2 million billion joules, or one trillion dietary calories. Imagine a 300,000 ton Twinkie that was about twice the length of a sports field. Now, interesting thing about this is that nuclear weapons yields are measured in tons of TNT equivalent. So a megaton blast is equivalent to one million tons of TNT. And the smart people in the audience will have realized that a 300,000 ton Twinkie contains the same energy as one million tons of TNT. Yes, the fat and sugar in Twinkies contains more energy than TNT. The difference is that TNT releases the energy a lot more quickly, whereas eating a Twinkie releases it relatively slowly, unless of course you feed it to an eight-year-old kid, in which case the results can be explosive. The asteroid impact that made the Chicxulub crater and probably helped kill off the dinosaurs had a yield roughly of about 500 billion trillion joules, which works out to be a 34 trillion ton Twinkie that's maybe 105 kilometers long. And so we come to the Death Star laser with its ability to destroy a planet. It would have to be fueled by a 68 billion trillion ton Twinkie that would be about 100,000 miles long. Yes, that is indeed bigger than a small moon. But the ability to destroy a planet is insignificant next to the power of some really big astronomical events. Supernova generates something like 10 to the 44 joules of energy. That is, uh, to fuel that you would require a Twinkie that was about 3 million solar masses and 4 AU long. That is four times the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Now, of course, it's very hard to imagine a Twinkie that big, especially if you're not an American and don't live in a country where Twinkies are in store shelves everywhere. But, you know, the good news is that a Twinkie that large and that massive would probably collapse into a black hole very, very quickly. So you just have to imagine a supermassive black hole, which is a lot easier because, as Stephen Hawking pointed out, black holes have no hair. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.